this very golden looking um, carbon filament style retro lamp was sent to me by Joshua Nichols. Now, they're sold in Ikea, but we don't have an Ikea Nile of Man, and they didn't have it in, the, on their, in their online store, so he very generously sent one across for disassembly, which is what we're going to be doing. But looking at it, um, it's kind of clear that this is a sort of light guide. It's not actually got LEDs in the actual the spiral bit itself. It just It's a plastic light guide. Um, and it looks very visual. It's not really designed for lighting a room. It's not super mega bright, but uh, visually it looks quite interesting to look at. It's a good decorative light. So um, let's uh, take a closer look at this. So here's the lamp showing the uh, the illuminated filament coming out from the base, and it's got a sort of coppery coloured plastic support to keep it in this, a spiral shape, and then it just plunges into the sort of like the matte silver base with this plastic globe over the top of it. And interestingly it says 1.8 watts, 15 milliamps, and it does actually measure exactly 1.8 watts and 15 milliamps, which is quite good. So um, let's uh, take a closer look and uh, open this up. Now this one has a small Edison screw, so I've got an adapter on it. And we'll just try opening it up right now, and if, again, if it doesn't really open too easily, uh, I'll pause. But I can see already that there's glue here. There's actually glue in four, four places around it, so this may not come apart with ease. It may require unreasonable force, and if it's not going to come apart easily, quickly, I shall pause the video. I, I don't think this is really going to come apart, even using modest pressure, so I shall pause. Okay, the dome is off. I have to say that um, you can use a spudger to get right down the sides and break the glue, but it still doesn't come out easily. You have to use a modest amount of force to get this out because these clips at the side, it's the case is sandwiched between this inner lip here and these clips at the side, so quite hard to get out and I, I took a wee chip out in the process just to uh, ended up having to do that to lever it out. So it's off, it's not over destroyed, it should be able to be put together again, but that depends on what I do from now on. So um, let's uh, see where what the light source is. Okay, that appears to be clipped in. Oh, right, okay, that was easy enough. Is that actually plastic? Magnet. No, that's metal, that little frame. I thought that was plastic. That's interesting. Uh, it's got two fibre optic, the two studs of the side glow fibre optic are coming out the base here and pretty much sitting down onto these two LEDs. Let's uh, put my meter continuity. Let's see if these are multi-chip LEDs or if it's just single-chip LEDs. That will give us a wee clue what the driver is going to be. It's glowing with just the test uh, voltage from the meter, so that suggests these are just individual LEDs. The light is rated 1.8 watts, which means each LED is 0.9 watts, 3 volts, about 300 milliamps, I'd guess, is going through these. So let's uh, go further. That's quite a neat arrangement. Uh, it's quite uh, clever the way they've got this aligned up with just the, the precision of the LEDs in the circuit board versus these, so that when you clip it together, the, the ends of the fibre just pop, are sat straight on top of the LED. Couple of screws. Don't think it's going to be a capacitive dropper. Buck regulator. Not sure. The only way to find out is to open this. Okay, um, right. What's the chip? I don't know if this is glued in or not, it's not exactly... Or maybe it's the cables that are holding it back. I don't see any... oh, there we go. Modestly short cables. So we've got a wee transformer, or is that a choke? Um. The chip has minute text on it again, but I can read a number. 
one five eight five three three nine. Sounds like one of those mystery numbers that IKEA products seem to have that just leads me in a wild goose chase. I've never found any of these components. I wonder if it's the factory that does the whole thing, just gets custom chips in with that number on them. There is another code underneath. TB1527. That could be a manufacturing date, 27th week of 2015. OK. Right, I think there's a... Merits a little more investigation. Uh, the transformer has four pins in that side and two pins in that side, so it looks as though it's probably not. Oh, let's see, uh, the uh, mains is coming in. It's getting rectified and then getting smoothed straight away, so it's unlikely to be the buck regulator. It's more likely to be a wee little switch converter. I shall just investigate this right now. Okay, a couple of images, crop down and flipped in this case, which is why the text is back to front, and some food and a glass of red wine-like substance for peasants. And we can take a wee look at what's uh, happening here. So this does look like it's... Uh, the chip is anonymous, by the way. It's just like all these IKEA products have anonymous chips. That It just seems to be a manufacturer's code on them. Sadly, because it's just a number on this, the 1585339, when you type that in the internet, it just comes up addresses and phone numbers and everything. And even trying to narrow it down by saying um, switch mode power supply or LED, it just doesn't bring anything up. It really must just be a manufacturer's number. This seems quite a common thing. So uh, the mains comes in, the neutral goes straight to the bridge rectifier, the live goes through this sleeved resistor, which I'm guessing they're acting as a fuse. Well, it says F, which probably means fuse. Um, so that's then acting... If it's a resistor, it's going to limit the current as well. And uh, is it a resistor? Let's take a look. It's a... Uh, it looks like a metal film resistor. It's grey, and it's got that sort of shape to it. Yeah, so it probably is. It's just a fusible resistor. So that goes to the bridge direct first. So that's our DC coming out. It goes straight to this capacitor here for smoothing, and then it gets filtered through this choke, 222, which is 2.2 thousand microhenries, 2.2 millihenries, um, and then goes to this capacitor here, which is just acting as a sort of buffer, it's just a little bit more smoothing and filtering, and that's this one here. So, on the chip, we've got the, let's see, the negative, the, the positive is going to this winding here, which, uh, this is obviously one winding, and this is another winding, and then we've got another winding here on this transformer. So three distinct windings. We've got the primary winding, which is being switched from positive here through this winding to the chip, and then the opposite side of the chip here. It's basically, if you divide the chip in half, that's the switching transistor. The other side is going through this uh, 20 ohm resistor to the ne filtered negative side. So it's ba basically just turning that uh, coil on off now, the primary on off. The primary also has a snubber network across it based on a diode between these two connections and this capacitor and resistor. So that's just basically, it uh, just takes the tips off the transients to protect this transistor and the chip from be uh, high voltage damage. The output coil, the winding, the secondary, uh, the negative goes right round to the LED negative and to this capacitor here. And the positive goes from the other end, end of the winding, it goes through this diode and then again to the capacitor and then out to the LED with just a load resistor of 2.7k across it. So that basically that just sums up that bit of the circuitry, it's very simple. The bootstrap and feedback, because it is both functions coming from this coil. One side of the coil is connected to the negative rail. Uh, this pin of the chip is also connected to the negative rail. Um, the bootstrap coil then is goes through this 2 ohm resistor and uh, this rectifier, and this capacitor is the one that's feeding this chip, so that provides the positive rail for this. So this pin is obviously positive. But there's also a potential divider between the output of the winding and the negative rail, uh, which appears to be here, and that's feeding round to this pin. So this must be, or should I say, that's actually coming under here. This pin is feedback. So that is a dual purpose coil, that the winding and that transformer. It's both the uh, power to actually run the chip and then the actual um, 
feedback to monitor the voltage and keep it, you know, the current on the other side of the winding. And that just leaves uh, a couple more resistors here. We've got, uh, we've actually got two of these resistors, 20 ohm resistors. So technically speaking, it's 10 ohm resistors, but it's divided, it's a 10 ohm resistor combined, but it's divided by two that just spreads the dissipation across them. And it's just possibly for sensing the current. That will set the, there'll be a sense section in the circuitry there that as the current flows from the winding, if when it reaches a certain threshold, the voltage across these resistors will be high enough that it will be detected inside as a threshold. And that just leaves these 330k resistors. That's quite high. 334, 330k. That's quite high. Mm. But anyway, they're coming from the, the high voltage positive rail, and they're both in series, and they are probably going under here and going to the positive terminal and trickle charging that capacitor up until uh, it, it reaches the threshold that, uh, that that it can actually run the chip. As soon as the chip starts running, then of course it gets its power from the feedback circuit here that does the, the bootstrap that actually charges the capacitor from that auxiliary power winding. So that's it, it is just a conventional uh, switch mode LED driver and all the components are 100% functional, everyone's justified in there. Uh, it's a fairly standard arrangement, just driving these two LEDs in series with a combined voltage of about 6 volts at about 300 milliamps, and that's what gives um, the power rating, he said, 6 volts times, let, hold on, let me just do that, 6 volts roughly times 0.3 equals, yeah, 1.8 watts, yeah, and that's uh, pretty much watch running this. It, it lights those LEDs, the light goes up the end of these side emitting fibres and then makes the whole thing glow. So I suppose if you could find similar LEDs and get them very accurately placed then you could change the colour of that. But having said that, it's quite a golden warm white so um, it's quite nice. Uh, and it works quite well. It's good as a visual effect. Now, it does cast a modest amount of light around the room, which is surprising, given that, you know, the only light is the stuff that's coming up these fibres and then emitting from the side of this um, side glow fibre optic. But um, it does put a modest amount of light and it's certainly very visual. Um, it, I've seen pictures of these lights just hanging in large clusters, which is how they seem to display them in Argus, uh, Argus Ikea. And that's a, that's a visual effect you're looking for, is all the glowing filaments just dangling from the ceiling. So it, it's quite neat. I quite like that. Yeah, I'm going to put this back together now, because uh, cause, uh, it is going to go back together, which is nice for a change. And uh, thanks, Joshua. That was uh, an interesting lamp to take apart. Well worthwhile. So that's it back together. And looking at this, you know, you wouldn't think that is 1.8 watts in the sense that, you know, it's not super mega bright. It's just an ambient light. Uh, and then you take the cover off and it's like, oh yeah, that's not super efficient, is it? So uh, there is an option if you have one of these lights to turn it into this super high output globe light without the filaments so that would be kind of pointless because the filaments are the main thing. But yeah, it's quite dramatic, the, the uh, efficiency comparison uh, between the amount of light comes out the filament versus what's actually being smacked out from the LEDs. Oh, look at that. It really is radial pattern it's putting out, isn't it? It's quite uh, quite unusual. But uh, yeah, lovely golden colour, by the way. They are white LED, warm white LEDs, but it's a golden. It's specifically to actually make this look like uh, sort of a glowing filament. So, um, yep, quite neat.